Hello everyone, welcome to our Egyptian online seminar group, First Chemical Jobs. And if you have any questions, you can ask our speaker during his presentation or after his presentation. Great pleasure of uh, welcoming here Professor Igor Junsharov. Uh, Igor is a, a professor of accounting at the Lancaster University Management School. Igor is on the economic consequences of financial reporting and fair value accounting in different settings, including firms, uh, invest, investment uh, companies, and his research has been published in top ranking journals including the Journal of Accounting Research, the Accounting Review, Review of Accounting uh, Studies, and the Journal as uh, Associate Editor of Accounting and Business Research, and has received a lot of awards uh, for excellence in research. We will start our seminar with dear Professor Agur. Yeah. Well, Hamid, thank you so much for this uh, introduction, and of course, for uh, inviting me. Uh, to the seminar, we just had a short uh, discussion. Uh, I mentioned to Mohammed that uh, we, we, generally the public, of course, uh, associates uh, only negative with the pandemic, but there were some uh, very positive uh, innovations uh, during this uh, time, uh, including uh, the seminar series that uh, um, uh, Mohammed managed to organize and successfully run now for uh, so many years. I think with 200, over 200 presentations now that were sent to me. So yeah, well, congratulations and uh, well, well done. You know. Now I'm uh, on on a campus in uh, Lancaster, uh, at Lancaster University, but it's not in Lancaster town. We have uh, also a campus in Leipzig, uh, Germany. Yeah, so that that's. Uh, um, where I'm now uh, physically based, but uh, good, good evening uh, to you all because you're uh, also one hour uh, ahead of me. Yeah. Um, I've just scrolled through the list, recognized some uh, familiar names, so thank you so much for uh, attending this uh, presentation. Now, this is a joint uh, paper with uh, Mahmoud Gat, and, uh, so, who is also a colleague at uh, Lancaster, uh, and Max uh, Müller, uh, who is in uh, Cologne, uh, Germany. And we look at um, uh, reporting quality and organizational form uh, choice, uh, specifically uh, modeling the decision um, of how uh, companies uh, decide uh, whether they set up uh, their firm as an uh, open end uh, or a closed end. Uh, we agree with Mohammed that you can ask uh, questions uh, during uh, the presentation. Yeah, of course, after the presentation, that's also uh, perfectly fine. I think it would make sense for me to go through the first uh, three or so slides, yeah, um, just to introduce you to the setting. So I guess uh, understanding the setting is uh, important for understanding what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but I'll flag when I'm uh, ready for uh, questions, and then you, of course, can then return and ask questions about any of the slides that um, I've just discussed with you. So wh wh why have we decided to uh, uh, look uh, at uh, this uh, topic? Mm -hmm. uh, in accounting research, there's a long uh, tradition uh, of examining and understanding how uh, fundamental asset characteristics uh, for example, whether an asset uh, is uh, actively traded on the market or whether it uh, has no market value, um, how those characteristics shape uh, uh, reporting models and require disclosures. Yeah? For example, whether we use fair value uh, or historical amortized costs. Uh, at the same time, there is a, a external literature in uh, economics and uh, finance with seminal works by uh, Parma Jensen and uh, Stein, uh, which look at um, uh, the choice of organizational form yeah, and related also uh, to uh, fundamental uh, characteristics of the firms or uh, assets uh, they invest in. So we combine these two streams uh, of literature and ask uh, whether um, high quality financial reporting, yeah, for example, providing uh, high quality valuations, providing additional uh, fair value disclosures, uh, broaden the spectrum of feasible uh, organizational forms uh, by helping uh, firms uh, overcome uh, measurement issues. Yeah, indeed, this, this is kind of one, one of the uh, role of uh, accounting profession to measure uh, assets and uh, uh, also um, uh, ensure that uh, investors have uh, trust uh, in uh, what they invest in. You know? 
Uh, there is also uh, an empirical observation, in fact, uh, two empirical observations that uh, motivated uh, our analysis. Uh, one of them comes from the accounting literature, the other one uh, from uh, the finance literature. So let, let me show you uh, the graph which uh, summarizes those two trends, uh, both in accounting and finance. So what you see on this uh, graph is uh, effectively the last uh, 25 uh, years. You know, I'm going to talk first about uh, uh, the, the, the gray uh, line. Yeah? Um, uh, this is uh, the development of uh, uh, fair value uh, reporting over time. Yeah, I think those of you who have background in accounting uh, know this general view that uh, reporting standards became much more uh, fair value based uh, than historical cost yeah, than uh, what they used to be, let's say, 20, 30 uh, years ago. Um, now, although this uh, observation, I think, is well established and is used for motivation of uh, a number of uh, papers by Mary Bath and uh, uh, others, um, we show here uh, uh, this, uh, this trend empirically of this graph. Yeah, so what we did is uh, in, in each year, uh, we looked at all um, FASB uh, accounting standards, so uh, accounting standards uh, issued by the US uh, accounting standards set. Yeah, and then uh, we count uh, the number of fair value uh, words uh, in this whole body of standards applicable in, in a given year. So let's say 1995 or 2002. Yeah? Um, and then we divide it just to scale, scale it by the total volume of uh, all uh, accounting standards uh, um, that we issued uh, uh, or were applicable in that specific year. Yeah. And what you can see is that there is uh, indeed an increasing trend. You can think of this as like a percentage fair value, you know, the extent of fair value uh, use uh, in, 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 in within the standards in a given year. Uh, you can see that uh, there is an increasing uh, trend uh, over the years. Um, um, there were some notable standards here, uh, starting from 1996, uh, then uh, around year 2000, uh, uh, then later in 2006. Um, and uh, what those standards uh, did is either they um, uh, mandated the use of fair value uh, for instruments, for example, financial uh, assets uh, for which previously only historical cost or monetized cost was applicable, or uh, defined a fair value, uh, or uh, required uh, further uh, additional disclosures. Yeah? So, for example, one of the type of disclosures that we are going to use also in our analysis uh, is the requirement of uh, firms to, uh, in the footnotes to financial statements, to break down their assets, fair value to assets and liabilities, into so-called uh, fair value levels. Yeah, with level one fair values being. Um, uh, uh, investments in uh, securities with observable market prices. Uh, so here we don't have any valuation challenges. Yeah, just read Financial Times at the end of the year, take the prices from the end and pl plug them onto your uh, balance sheet. Um, uh, and level two and level three fairings. That's that's where we have measurement issues. Uh, level two would be uh, comparing to uh, some uh, uh, similar instruments uh, uh, which are traded, but. Uh, uh, kind of not, not the same uh, as the instrument that um, uh, you are valued. Yeah? Uh, and level three, this, uh, this are marked model estimates. Yeah? So this is uh, well, predicting the cash flows, then figuring out the discount rates, so a lot, lot of discretion in those valuations. So th this is an accounting trend. In finance, uh, uh, we see uh, emergence uh, of new type of uh, mutual funds, uh, open-end uh, funds. Uh, which invest in uh, difficult uh, to value assets. So here the orange line, for example, captures, um, this is uh, the data from a, a paper uh, in JFE kindly shared with us uh, uh, by the authors of that paper. Uh, it uh, tracks the development, uh, emergence and development of uh, uh, mutual funds that invest in private equities, you know, private equity. So for example, uh, uh, private companies before they uh, do an IPO. Um, we also looked at uh, another way to measure that, uh, downloaded all uh, mutual funds that um, uh, trade in the US yeah, and looked at the assets and then uh, by deleting those mutual funds that invest in traded securities, bonds and other typical listed type of instruments, we ended up with a residual, uh, which would be the untypical, uh, difficult to measure, unquoted instruments. This is the blue line. Yeah? Well, regardless of which line you uh, look, there's, a, there's an, an increasing uh, trend. 
Uh, and interestingly, and we'll have more formal analysis on that uh, later in the paper, uh, those accounting and finance trends uh, are highly correlated. Yeah, so we talk about, about correlations up to uh, 90%. So what, what do we do in this uh, paper? Uh, we um, uh, look at uh, uh, two organizational form types. Yeah? Uh, on one side, closed end. On the other side, uh, open end. Yeah? Uh, when you think about uh, closed end, think about uh, Microsoft, Apple. So that this would be a typical example of closed end firms. So these are uh, firms with shares uh, listed on, um, uh, on an active market, secondary market. Yeah, and when uh, investors want to buy and sell shares, they don't turn to the firm, they go on the market yeah, and then buy or sell shares. Yeah? Uh, firms themselves transact only sporadically yeah, when they do a seasoned equity offering or uh, liquid chase of shares. Now, this is different from uh, open end funds. Yeah? Uh, a typical example here that you're you know, surely all familiar with uh, would be a mutual fund. Yeah? Uh, now, mutual funds, uh, for mutual fund shares, for open and mutual fund shares, there is no secondary market and no secondary trading. Um, so it's the transactions between investors uh, and the firm happen directly. Yes, yeah? so if the investors want to issue or redeem, so kind of sell back uh, uh, their shares, they would need to turn uh, to the fund, yeah? which will tell them uh, uh, the estimated, yeah, the estimated, and that asset value per share at which they can then buy or uh, sell uh, shares. Now, although I'm, it sounds like we're going to compare Microsoft to mutual funds, that's not, not uh, what's going on in our analysis. We are going to compare uh, apples to apples here yeah, so to make sure that uh, um, you know, open end and closed end funds uh, that we can see and compare in our analysis uh, actually invest in the same or very similar uh, asset types. Now, what does the extension in finance and economics uh, say about those open and closed and uh, organizational forms? There's a huge literature on uh, uh, what is optimal, why firms choose uh, each of the structures. Um, you know, some papers argue we have too many open and uh, funds, and this might have uh, negative welfare implications. This is the view of Stein. Um, and of course, this is an important decision. Yeah, we are talking about uh, uh, an industry in the U.S. with over 22 trillion of assets uh, under uh, measurement. So the main uh, the theory argument so far uh, in the literature about how firms make the decision about whether they set up uh, a firm as an open end or closed end is that a closed end uh, firm is a closed end form is for firms with hard to value assets. Yeah, you have significant measurement issues. So, you know, outsource this measurement to the markets, yeah, um, secondary markets will do the pricing, yeah, and then determine what uh, the firm and thus, you know, all, all of its assets combined and net assets combined uh, are valued. Now, interestingly, open end form actually has uh, a lot of governance uh, advantages, and they come from the fact that um, um, uh, uh, open end firm uh, investors um, uh, do active monitoring and can um, uh, pull the plug. Yeah, by redeeming their shares. And indeed, on the news, you sometimes uh, uh, read information about mutual funds having to close because too many investors came and uh, with, uh, withdrew their uh, money from uh, the fund. Now, there are clear advantages here uh, for firms to be set, set up as open end firms, but uh, prior literature, this is Farman Jensen uh, theory, and then uh, many, many papers in finance tested it uh, empirically. Uh, is that uh, this form is uh, feasible only for firms that invest uh, in easy to trade and easy to value assets? Yeah, because of this measurement uh, problems. Now, I think this is this is where accountants can come in and uh, say, well, you know, that that's actually our job to measure. Yeah, uh, we don't see uh, measurement, um, you, you know, hard hard to measurement uh, features uh, being concurrent. This is where. Uh, accountants uh, can help yeah, by uh, providing better quality um, uh, valuations uh, and by uh, providing also supplemental information that can help uh, in investors determine whether those uh, valuations are, are, are trustworthy. Yeah? So uh, the role of accounting information and how those measurements are created has been so far uh, ignored, and this is uh, uh, where uh, we hope uh, to uh, contribute to this literature. Now, what, what do we do in this paper? Yeah, we compare um, uh, reporting of uh, firms that are similar in holding those hard to value assets yeah, with significant measurement uh, issues, but they differ in whether they've chosen an open-end or a closed-end organizational form. 
Yeah? This is the only feature we hope varies across our subsamples. Yeah? Uh, are the features of those open and closed end firms that we compare uh, are the same yeah? or very, very similar? Yeah, so, for example, uh, they don't pay any taxes. Uh, they either have uh, no debt or have debt where, you know, those contractual incentives usually would, that we know from uh, listed U.S. or U.K. Egyptian corporations uh, do not apply. Uh, they have dispersed ownership. Um, you know, in our setting, we have, uh, you know, one, one fund where we have like 1.5% uh, percent owned by uh, by someone. You know, we don't know who that is, but by one uh, person or firm. Uh, otherwise, it's, you know, not built below 1% percent ownership. Uh, they are subject to the same regulation, uh, SSC enforcement, um, and importantly, and this is what we must control in our analysis, they invest in the same or similar uh, had two billion uh, assets. So we compare those uh, uh, sets of uh, uh, funds uh, across two settings. We start with uh, real estate firms and compare here open end real estate firms to uh, closed end uh, real estate uh, uh, firms uh, and ask uh, uh, several questions. Yeah? Uh, uh, first, we focus, uh, re recall that what we want to establish is whether um, kind of better quality accounting, better quality valuations and disclosures help uh, firms uh, choose uh, an open end firm. Uh, well, previously they could only do the closed end firm. Yeah. So to answer this question, we um, kind of triangulate across different uh, settings and test um, the necessary condition for our, uh, uh, you know, to, to find evidence for this uh, prediction uh, is that there must be a higher uh, demand. Uh, for reporting information in open end firms relative to closed end firms. Yeah. So if those valuations, high quality information matters, yeah, it should be in more demand than for closed end firms, uh, which where investors pre presumably care more about um, uh, share price uh, than uh, underlying cash flows. You know? So we do this analysis in the real estate uh, setting. We then uh, ask whether this higher demand also transfers into supply of higher quality uh, uh, financial statements. So we compare reporting quality uh, of uh, open-end real estate firms to uh, uh, closed-end real estate firms. Uh, we then extend these uh, findings and those tests uh, to this much larger mutual fund setting. So we go from a few hundred data points to a million data points. Um, so th those who are unhappy with small samples, <laughs> we we'll, we'll also have a very large uh, sample uh, uh, to show you. And again, we kind of re replicate those tests with some adjustments. Yeah, real estate firms invest in uh, real estate, which is an operating asset. Uh, uh, here we'll be talking about investments in financial assets. So this is this is the necessary conditions for our um, um, predictions to hold. We also look at uh, sufficient condition. Uh, and a look at uh, whether um, uh, the emergence of app open and mutual funds with hard to value assets coincides with the introduction and statutization of uh, fair value reporting yeah, all the time. So the previous analysis is effectively cross-sections, the panel data. This will be a time series test in the US using uh, 25 uh, years of data. So I think this, this is kind of the, the, the core of the paper. I'm going to talk now about um, and how reporting uh, works and what are our main results, but you can ask now questions at, uh, at any time if you like. Yeah. Um, so let me introduce to you those two settings and just so you keep in mind what are the requirements and you know, what are we actually comparing for. Uh, we first look at uh, real estate firms. So this is uh, overall there are 300 such firms, although due to data availability is a bit less uh, of such firms that we use in, uh, in our paper. And then invest into uh, called about two trillion uh, of assets, US dollar uh, under measure. So closed end firms uh, and open end firms face similar reporting requirements. They uh, report uh, 10Ks, 10Qs. Uh, um, in fact, uh, uh, real estate closed end firms have been extensively uh, examined by accounting literature. So quite a few papers uh, by uh, by Easy Riddle. I saw uh, John Anvold here among the, uh, he has a paper. Um, uh, lo lo looking at those uh, vehicles uh, too. I, I had a paper which looks at uh, how the introduction of fair value in Europe, uh, uh, you know, whether it had any consequences. 
Uh, but interestingly, because we use uh, the US, yeah, uh, both closed and open end firms hold their real estate assets at uh, depreciated, uh, so historical cost. Yeah? Closed end firms, which we analyzed previously, should do not provide any supplementary uh, payability disclosures. Yeah, this is one of the huge differences between US GAAP and uh, IFRS, where those uh, uh, payability, uh, payability information on real estate is required either on the balance sheet or uh, at least the footnotes. No? And uh, interesting also that um, it's perhaps surprising finding, uh, despite the transparency of the uh, US uh, market, um, uh, no closed end real estate firms provide payability information voluntarily. No? This is different from our open end uh, firms, which um, are also subject to same reporting requirements, but which uh, provide, uh, in most cases, uh, a voluntary uh, pay value uh, information. Uh, in fact, some of them provide uh, very detailed information. We are going to exploit this uh, cross sexual variation in our analysis. So, some, for example, would uh, restate the historical cost financial statements at fair value, do simulation analysis. Uh, provide supplementary disclosures uh, about discount rates, what models they used, um, and uh, so this, this goes over pages yeah, in, 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 in the footnotes to financial statements. Now, if we'll switch to how they transact with uh, shareholders, closed end uh, funds have, uh, sorry, his, uh, it should read uh, market price per share. Yes, yeah, so they have uh, a market price per share, which is determined in the secondary market, and uh, shareholders then turn to the secondary market uh, to stock exchange uh, to trade the shares. Yeah. Um, open end funds uh, uh, trade directly uh, with the investors at uh, NAV. Yeah, so this uh, these are net asset values for those who are unfamiliar with the setting. This the, the same as uh, shareholders' equity. Yeah. Uh, but this is the shareholders' equity restated at uh, fair value. And of course, they determine an AVP share so that you know what, what price you will get if you uh, buy or uh, sell shares back to the fund. Now, mutual fund setting uh, quite uh, well, exactly the same in terms of uh, transactions, yeah? uh, but uh, reporting requirements uh, are different here. So they file reports that well, they're called differently. It's called, they're called uh, NCSR, but uh, effectively, this is the same as, uh, as 10K. Uh, they also registered with the SEC, uh, monitored by SEC, and um, uh, SEC comes off and enforces something with, uh, with, 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 with those guys. Um, uh, but they don't do historical costs. So those uh, uh, mutual funds closed and open and uh, they value virtually all, all of their assets uh, at, at fair value. Okay. So we're going to run analysis in those two tests uh, with the following predictions. Yeah, uh, we know, and this is uh, you know starting from Ball and Brown, 1968, and then Ball, Shirokumapi, and many others uh, show that for closed and firm uh, shares uh, that um, they are traded in secondary markets and their uh, share price largely preempts or leads. Uh, information on uh, in financial reports. Yeah, if you recall this typical picture from Ball and Brown, yeah, where the, kind of the lines diverge one year earlier, yeah, so the the markets throughout the year already can guess uh, what earnings would look like uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, for open end firms, there is no secondary uh, market, um, uh, so they have to transact with their investors uh, directly using an IV uh, So we predict. Oh, I see. I was, I was hanging now. Um, so we uh, have the following uh, two predictions. Yeah. Uh, first of all, financial reporting will likely assume uh, a more prominent uh, role in facilitating capital transactions by informing and uh, collaborating firms' NAV estimates. Yeah? In, investors must be uh, must trust those numbers. Yeah? Uh, so there's a bit of convincing to do. Uh, and I recall there is no no share price. Yeah. So this is. Uh, the, the, the only uh, information that they get uh, uh, about their share price comes from firm accounts and credits. Um, uh, open end firms with had uh, to value assets based on the Pharma Jensen and uh, other similar papers actually not predicted to exist unless uh, the accounting helps address those ma inherent measurement uh, issues with hard to value uh, assets. Now, although our predictions go uh, in one direction, uh, we have several arguments uh, uh, kind of to build up uh, a bit of tension uh, against those predictions. Well, f first of all, uh, there's this literature on um, managers learning uh, from share prices. 
you know, uh, you know, if you have real estate and only real estate, uh, and you have uh, shares traded on the market and share price uh, drops, uh, this is where investors, managers, but also auditors. Uh, infer that uh, likely the book value of assets uh, are too high, and uh, the you, you, uh, firm must uh, uh, impair at least some of those assets. You know? Now, this learning from prices, of course, doesn't exist in open and firm setting because they don't have prices. Um, the other thing, and there's a lot of evidence on uh, man manipulations uh, of the electors by uh, mutual funds, uh, is that uh, there's effectively no filtering. Yeah. So managers manipulate of, uh, you know, Microsoft, Apple, uh, they manipulate their earnings and hope that uh, in investors uh, will fixate on that figure and will not uncover uh, any of those manipulations. Yeah? This filtering doesn't, doesn't exist uh, in the open end firms because whatever the accounting brackets uh, determine will be and, or is uh, the share price at which they uh, trade uh, their shares. So it could be that uh, incentives, but also the amount of earnings management uh, in open and firm setting is higher. So uh, the financial records uh, accounting information is uh, actually looks worse as of lower quality than that of uh, closed end uh, firms. Uh, all mean uh, results. Yeah. Um, so first of all, we find that there's a high demand and a greater supply of. Uh, high quality accounting uh, information open and relative to uh, closed end firms. Uh, for example, we find that uh, 10Ks, 10Qs, and similar filings are downloaded more frequently by open end firm uh, investors than uh, by closed end firm investors. Uh, we also find that um, only uh, those supplementary payability disclosures uh, exist only in open end firm settings, but not in closed end firm settings. Uh, with an open-end uh, firms, those uh, supplementary, more detailed fair value disclosures also correlate uh, with greater uh, uh, demand for financial filings uh, with share redemptions uh, programs. Yeah, this is where investors uh, really need uh, uh, trust in, 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 in the numbers yeah, because that's the price they will get uh, from the firm for their shares. Uh, but also great investments in the reporting quotes. Yeah? So we find that open-end firms uh, tend to invest more in hiring um, uh, highly reputable appraisers, uh, doing high co high quality uh, audits. Um, and finally, and this is uh, kind of an interesting uh, finding, I uh, think, uh, is that um, the whole process of uh, preparing uh, the supplementary fair value information in open and firm setting it also disciplines the historical cost uh, records. So we find that uh, the impairments, well, which because they are based on the fair value and this uh, must relate uh, to those estimates of net asset value. Uh, the impairments are much more timely and uh, have uh, more predictive ability for future negative cash flows. Uh, we find similar results um, uh, in, uh, in this larger uh, uh, mutual uh, fund uh, setting. So here again, we find high quality uh, more readable financial uh, statements of uh, open end relative to closed end uh, firms. Uh, and interestingly, we find that uh, the emergence of open end mutual funds uh, with hard to value uh, assets uh, coincides uh, with the introduction of uh, more fair value uh, rules. So let me go now through uh, the results. Our first setting is uh, real estate. Uh, so I've, I've uh, explained already all the uh, details of the setting, uh, but let me also show you this key distinction that we are going to uh, use in our tests for open-end uh, real estate firms. So this, these are the guys without, uh, without the share price. Um, so unlike in closed end firms, for open end firms, we find that um, uh, th there is additional uh, voluntarily uh, disclosed fair value information, but the quality of this information differs. Yeah, so some uh, provide uh, very brief information on fair values. Yeah, they just say, you know, we did the analysis, we spoke to appraisers, uh, they gave us the range of values, and we uh, picked one value from this range. Yeah. Interestingly, in many cases, this uh, uh, this value that they pick is not just the middle estimate. Yeah? So they, despite the values pro provided by appraisers and sometimes high quality appraisers, they still have 
quite a bit of discretion. Yeah, so they could set any value between, let's say, if the appraiser says anywhere between nine and ten. Yeah, they could say, well, we determine it's nine point eight. You know, but no further information. Um, but we also find that about two thirds of our sample provide uh, very extensive uh, fair value information with. Uh, uh, their historical cost uh, financial statements uh, being restated again. This is completely voluntary uh, at uh, at fair value. Yeah. So what you see here is an example, but this is this is just you know half a page. Yeah? Those disclosures then go into uh, at least another one, often two, three pages with simulations and uh, talking about assumptions and how they did uh, this analysis. Now, interestingly, if you look uh, here on this um, uh, on, on on this restated balance sheet, uh, it's kind of quite quite obvious that you need them to if you do that, uh, you, you uh, re uh, measure your assets at fair value. But they also do what's a bit more controversial in uh, in, in accounting. They also uh, fair value uh, uh, liabilities. You know? Let me show you first test to re recall as our uh, uh, first uh, analysis, uh, we'll look at uh, the demand uh, for financial filings. So our uh, dependent variable here would be the number of uh, downloads uh, of financial filings, such as uh, 10 Qs and uh, 10 Ks uh, in, in, in a given year. Yeah. Uh, our main test variable is an uh, indicator variable, so one zero, uh, one for open and uh, zero uh, for uh, close that. Yeah. Now, across all the uh, estimations, we find uh, that uh, open end firms, um, uh, open end firm financial filings tend to be downloaded more frequently than uh, those of uh, closed end firms. Now, in terms of uh, economic magnitude, unfortunately, I forgot now the exact uh, number, but it was quite substantial. So we talk about 80 to 90, uh, perhaps even higher. A somewhat high uh, increase, uh, but this is not, not too high. Yeah? So uh, for for uh, an average um, uh, for an average uh, for an average uh, firm, uh, we, we talk uh, only about something like 20, 30 downloads. So we, we kind of you know go from uh, whatever twenty downloads to forty downloads. Yeah? So we think those numbers make uh, yeah, a perfect economic sense. Now, what you see here uh, across the columns is uh, we start with a very simple estimation where, where we control for size and uh, age. Yeah? Uh, we also did a different analysis where we uh, kind of tried to uh, did the entropy balancing and uh, um, kind of more, more closely matched um, uh, open and closed and firms based on size because uh, closed and firms tend to be larger uh, on average than open and firms. Uh, we then uh, uh, in included uh, more controls uh, for the underlying assets. Yeah, so we, we know they all invest in uh, real estate, always difficult to measure. Yeah? Um, um, so you need to run some sort of DCF uh, model to, to appraisers, which would also rely on DCF. Yeah? Um, so we control for the uh, cash flow volatility yeah, as, a, as a measure of the uh, riskiness uh, of, the, uh, of the investments. Uh, we control for the uh, for the um, uh, kind of riskiness uh, generally yeah, by looking at the uh, volatility of uh, stock returns uh, over time. Uh, and finally, this is uh, done now in um, in column five. Um, uh, Mahmoud did an excellent job, so he went and looked uh, into which uh, uh, real estate assets they invest into. Yeah? Um, uh, and then we uh, did, did different categorizations, uh, so that we compare apples to apples. Yes, yeah? so for example, we know which uh, invest in shopping malls, uh, uh, which invest in residential buildings, which invest in offices, and so we cr created such uh, homogeneous uh, categories uh, and included fixed effects for those categories. Uh, we even did uh, further and then uh, looked and uh, where those uh, firms invest now geographically. Yes, yeah? so th those of you who are familiar with real estate or uh, 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 brokers, real estate brokers would know the most important three most important things about uh, real estate: it's uh, uh, location, uh, location. Uh, location. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's what we also control for. We know where they um, 
uh, most likely invest yeah, and uh, also control for uh, fixed effects uh, uh, based on the uh, geography of the uh, of the investments. Uh, again, the the coefficient uh, that doesn't change that much, uh, at least in those models that are more saturated with controls. Now, uh, what you see in columns seven and eight is uh, our more detailed analysis within the open end settings. Yeah, so this uh, again, the guys uh, non traded, yes, we don't, we don't have um, uh, shares uh, traded on the market. Yeah? Uh, and here we find that uh, demand is greater for those firms who provide this higher quality fair value disclosures, so fair value balances. Yeah? Uh, we also find uh, that the demand uh, is correlated with uh, repurchases, yeah? so when investors want to um, uh, get money for their shares, yeah? and uh, uh, also with the investments uh, in uh, the quality of accounting information. Here we look at uh, kind of an indicator that are variable for the use of uh, high quality appraiser. Yeah? So within the appraiser industry uh, in the US, but it's also uh, true for the UK, um, um, uh, it's, Kind of works quite similarly to the big big four uh, audiences so there are big, big market players um, uh, we uh, look at those in this test uh, we then look whether this higher demand is also associated with uh, supply uh, of high quality information by open and relative to closed end firms uh, we follow prior literature yeah, and look at uh, the um, kind of attributes, the quality attributes of uh, financial information, accounting information that's uh, most useful for uh, investors. Yeah, and uh, uh, of course, investors for valuation would like to know future uh, cash flows because that's what they plug into their own valuations. Uh, so we'll look at uh, how good uh, uh, accounting earnings uh, predict uh, future cash flows. Yeah, we we'll look at cash flows in T plus one, but uh, you know, recall this: this is real estate, yeah? and uh, uh, any price changes of real estate do not, well, luckily for those of us who rent, uh, do not uh, immediately uh, translate uh, into higher rental uh, payments. Yeah, so this can uh, go with lag. So we also look at uh, predicting cash flows from uh, T plus one to T plus three. Yeah, so th three years ahead. Um. um we, we look closed end firms, uh, open end firms. Um, uh, we control for uh, returns. So, this either share price returns are based on uh, percentage change in uh, NAV yeah, for open end firms. Uh, this is just to account for the kind of more complete information set available to investors. Uh, and finally, uh, we got a bit concerned that. Um, uh, in closed and firms, uh, market returns don't seem to have much predictive ability for a firms' uh, future cash flows. Uh, but then we recall that uh, during um, uh, our uh, period, uh, uh, you know, so, so, so some of the variation was due to um, in, in market returns was uh, due to um, um, uh, to low interest rates. Um, uh, so we also uh, kind of controlled. Uh, uh, for the uh, kind of s s sign of the uh, returns, uh, knowing that this uh, th those negative returns during our sample period are more likely to indicate future uh, cash flows rather than just the discount rate changes. Mm -hmm. Now, the primary metric that we are looking at is the R squared. Yeah, so how good uh, uh, is accounting information earnings uh, of closed and versus uh, open end firms uh, uh, in, in predicting future cash? Now, comparing uh, R squares uh, across uh, samples is uh, challenging. So, uh, in some prior papers, we use um, uh, randomization uh, tests. Yeah. Uh, so, this is uh, based on uh, kind of reshuffling and mingling randomly uh, observations of open and closed uh, firms and then uh, creating two random groups uh, that we compare. Yeah. If there are some issues with the data, yeah, that lead uh, to closed and uh, R squares being uh, lower than open and R squares, then uh, we should see quite a lot of uh, instances uh, of those kind of random groups uh, uh, creating uh, large uh, differences in R squares. Yeah. So what we'd like to know is uh, whether the difference uh, in R squared that you observe in this table, which is like kind of marked with a uh, with a gray uh, gray uh, row, 
uh, where those differences are uh, indeed statistically significant. Yeah? In economic terms, uh, they are. So, uh, for example, if you compare column six to column three, we talk about almost uh, doubling, uh, almost doubling uh, the value of the R squared. Um, now, when we uh, uh, do this analysis, when we uh, look at the uh, p-values, um, uh, 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 they are uh, significant to, uh, at five percent uh, level for estimations uh, uh, for those kind of cash flows uh, that are uh, from t plus one to t plus three. So the cash flows that uh, fit better uh, with our real estate setting. Uh, but we also find that uh, kind of p-values, p uh, at least in some of the comparisons, uh, are uh, either uh, below or close to uh, conventional thresholds uh, uh, for cash flows in uh, T plus one. Yeah. Uh, overall, out of six estimations uh, or six comparisons, we find that in four uh, results are significant at 10 or 5% level you know, uh, based on the t sensitive test. Uh, now, interestingly, also when we look into uh, open-end uh, firms and then compare uh, those who have fair value balances versus those who don't, uh, we find also um, uh, differences in um, uh, in R squared here, and it's uh, predominantly firms that uh, open-end firms that produce uh, this higher quality disclosures. They are the ones. Uh, 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 with the with the counting records of uh, higher quality and being more predictive of future cash flows. Uh, and now I'm not, I'm not going to show you here, but we have a lot of supplementary analysis in the paper where we um, the, um, uh, kind of control for uh, underlying assets. So we also control for cash flow volatility, uh, for fixed effects based on the geography and. Um, uh, location and then look at the incremental R squares that uh, from those regressions that are generated by the by counting information. Mm -hmm. uh, we then uh, move one step uh, forward yeah, and then uh, look at the because you know prior tests earnings could be uh, could be about uh, accruals or cash flows. Now in this analysis, we replace earnings with a primary accrual uh, in in the real estate industry. This are impairments. Yeah. Uh, it's primary because of the size, uh, because of its uh, importance. And interesting, it's also related with pair values. Yeah, So I think it kind of fits well with um, uh, our story. Uh, recall that our uh, pension, yeah, our kind of alternative uh, prediction would suggest that uh, closed end firms can uh, learn from declines in prices and uh, know better, must know better when to impair their assets than open end firms that uh, can't observe uh, uh, you know, what markets think about the valuations of their uh, um, uh, amortized depreciated cost uh, uh, real estate. No, yeah. so we, we replicate exactly the same analysis. Now here, of course, uh, earnings must be positively related to future cash flows. Impairments must be negative, so they signal negative future cash flows. Yeah, again, we find uh, kind of highly significant results, but uh, predominantly uh, for those open end uh, firms uh, which uh, produce those high quality disclosures. Yeah, so. Um, uh, the uh, uh, de depreciated costs, uh, financial statements restated at uh, uh, fair value. Uh, here we uh, say, so, you know, the appearance is one, one uh, accrual. Uh, you know, you can, we can look also at uh, other accruals. Uh, here it's, it's challenging here yeah, because, you know, what's what's uh, what's inventory for uh, for real estate as you can Pens, pens and paper uh, of uh, real estate brokers. So uh, quite a few of accruals um, uh, that are important for manufacturing firms are not important at real estate. So we, we, we look at the kind of aggregate uh, measure of um, uh, accruals. And again, we find that uh, this, this measure has more predictive ability for future cash flows in open-end firms, and especially when uh, those open-end firms provide uh, fair value. Uh, disclosures with fair values, uh, with the whole balance sheet being restated at fair value. Um, as, uh, as our next test, uh, we now uh, zoom in into, uh, into open-end uh, real estate firms uh, and look at, try to explain now why, why some firms uh, produce this high quality fair value balances and others uh, do not. Yeah. 
uh, we find that uh, the decision uh, to provide such high quality fair value information uh, is related to uh, transactions with um, uh, uh, with investors. Yeah, so here uh, this repurchases. Yeah, so whether whether they have repurchased an active repurchase program or not in a given year. Uh, but they also uh, related uh, uh, with, with the use of uh, or investments in high quality uh, uh, accounting infrastructure. Uh, here, proxied by the use of a reputable appraiser and uh, audit fees. Uh, in audit uh, literature, this is, uh, audit fees usually a measure of uh, um, kind of investments, but also high, high quality, high quality audits. Now, we do uh, appraisals and audit fees. Uh, or, or we'll add audit fees later because there could be some substitution. Yeah, if, if the you have high quality appraiser and they provide you with high quality estimates, you might not need a high quality uh, auditor. And you know, if auditors checked and already done all the evaluations, you might not need a high quality appraiser. Yeah, but we find that both uh, auditors and appraisers frequently uh, matter uh, in, in in this set. Yeah. Uh, in terms of economic magnitudes, you see here marginal effects. Uh, they, they are also quite uh, not quite, but they, they are meaningful. No. So I hope uh, I can convince you that there are differences in our real estate setting. Uh, as operating assets has a lot of information for us also about the underlying investments. But the main disadvantage of the setting is that um, uh, we are talking only about a few hundred firms. Yeah, I mean, uh, obtaining high, uh, highly significant results for a few hundred observations is more difficult, of course, than for uh, millions. But uh, for large uh, sample aficionados, uh, we also look at this uh, alternative setting now with uh, 10,000 funds, uh, 20 trillion uh, US dollar of assets under uh, management. Uh, recall that we are not going to compare. Um, uh, firms that invest in financial uh, instruments yeah, rather than operating assets uh, and that hold all uh, the investments at fair value, yeah, both open-end and closed-end firms. Yeah? Now, this provides uh, this leads to a challenge here yeah, because we cannot apply similar tests as uh, before. Yeah? There's no such thing as well, you know, with similar meaning as operating cash flows here, yeah, you know, accruals, what's, what's, what's an operating accrual for, for those firms, but also also doesn't exist. Uh, but we figured out uh, a way, way around that, how we can compare accounting uh, 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 quality, so uh, the, the uh, balance sheet numbers, the quality of balance sheet numbers, so income statement numbers, uh, and the quality of uh, disclosures are uh, also in uh, this uh, set. Yeah? Now, uh, and it took us a huge amount of time and uh, programming and finding an IT specialist to do that. Um, how we can uh, automatically harvest uh, information from the footnotes of financial statements and what type of assets those guys actually invest in. Yeah? Uh, recall, we uh, primarily concerned about um, uh, firms that invest in hard to value assets. So this is level two or level three uh, valuations. Uh, so we uh, had to obtain the data on those level two and level three valuations. Uh, because there's, you know, for level, level one uh, valuations in mutual funds that invest in Apple and Microsoft, is, uh, you can write clearer financial statements, yeah, but in terms of, uh, you know, accounting, is not, nothing to worry about. And, uh, you can take take some shares and run away, yeah, pretend you did, didn't do that, uh, but uh, with level one, there's no measurement issues, uh, no accounting problem whatsoever. So how do we go about uh, our tests? Yeah, um, uh, we follow the same uh, logic as with uh, uh, operating accruals and managing or manipulating uh, operating accruals. Yeah? Um, uh, uh, recall that uh, this, this is uh, papers by Dicho and many others um, uh, that uh, uh, when uh, firms does uh, a mistake, either an honest mistake, so uh, genuine error, or intentional mistake, uh, so Unix management, uh, it must correct its records uh, in the future for several reasons. Yeah, so let, 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 let's say a uh, firm uh, kind of pretended that it's uh, hard to measure assets are actually higher in value. Yeah. Now, uh, one possibility in which this kind of high evaluation will revert in the future is when a firm, for example, will sell its assets or this specific asset. And 
uh, it will uh, realize a lower price. So uh, higher valuation will uh, result in a lower realized gain in the future. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, for genuine errors, firms will discover this uh, in later years, and so we'll have to uh, provide the correcting entry. So if there was a positive uh, up, up for the error, they would need to record a downward uh, adjustment uh, in, 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 in later uh, periods. Yeah. So those arguments suggest that um, if there are intentional genuine errors in uh, uh, NAV estimates of open and closed and firms, uh, there's, they are likely to be a source of negative uh, autocorrelation of um, uh, NAV uh, returns of open and closed end funds. So what we do in this analysis is we look for the negative autocorrelation of uh, NAV returns. So we re regress NAV returns in T plus one on NAV returns in, in year T. Yeah? Uh, and look at the coefficient on uh, NAV returns in uh, T. Yeah? Uh, we have also another advantage provided to us by uh, our uh, setting. Uh, closed end uh, firms have also market returns. Yeah? And uh, uh, market returns are not directly impacted by uh, accounting uh, manipulation. So accountant cannot manipulate market returns directly. Yeah? Uh, so as our benchmark, I'm noting that uh, open and closed end firms, uh, this has been found by uh, papers by Plontiff, um, uh, invest pretty much similar assets, so you can re replicate investments uh, of a closed end fund by uh, uh, using a, a portfolio of open end uh, funds. Uh, uh, so we use this uh, the autocorrelation of market returns as a benchmark. So this this is uh, this is our first test. We start with closed end firms and uh, look at the autocorrelation of market returns. Uh, usually it's either uh, zero because markets uh, follow uh, random walk, or it could be slightly positive. This this is uh, this is not a well known um, uh, momentum uh, momentum factor. Yeah. So it, it, during our uh, sample, they tend to be market returns tend to be uh, uh, kind of positively correlated. So we use this positive uh, this value as our uh, benchmark, and then uh, look at uh, at the NAV returns. Uh, of closed end funds. Recall this, these are the same firms. So, this is for them, we have uh, a market return and an AV return. Yeah. So, we use firm as its own control. And despite market returns, and, you know, they, they measure, of course, on the underly same underlying assets yeah? and returns on same underlying assets. And what we find is that uh, uh, NAV returns are uh, strongly negatively correlated. Uh, we then uh, break down this uh, um, autocorrelation in autocorrelation for uh, level one uh, NAV returns. So NAV returns for those funds that invest only in level one assets and compare that to the autocorrelation of uh, NAV returns for level two and level three failures. So this this level two, level three, where all the measurement issues are. Yeah? So this is uh, reported here, um, uh, while uh, for um, uh, NAV returns of level one assets, the coefficient is uh, positive. So 0 0.015, yeah, that's the, uh, the first coefficient reported in column three. Uh, the incremental effect of uh, autocorrelation for level uh, for those uh, closed and funds that invest in um, uh, assets with measurement uh, issues uh, is strongly negative. Yeah. So, in other words, we find that this negative autocorrelation only uh, exists when closed end funds invest in uh, difficult to measure uh, assets with substantial measurement problems. Yeah. We now compare those uh, uh, values with uh, uh, with open end funds. Now, open end funds uh, returns are positively autocorrelated. Yeah. In fact, if you look at column five, yeah, the, the 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 coefficient that is now in the in in the red box. Uh, the value of uh, in the autocorrelation of NAV returns for open end funds is almost exactly the same uh, as uh, that for the autocorrelation of market returns. Yeah? So, in other words, the, uh, the, kind of the, the, the the valuations, the NAV returns of open end funds, especially when they invest in level one assets, are uh, exactly the same as uh, as, as market returns yeah, uh, would be. Um, we then uh, do, do, do a comparison yeah, for closed end and uh, to open end uh, funds and uh, find that uh, this negative autocorrelation, so um, our uh, proxy for uh, low quality financial statements, for financial statements that are affected by intentional and unintentional errors, 
um, uh, the, the quality uh, of um, uh, financial statements of closed-end funds uh, is uh, lower than uh, open-end funds. Uh, and this is especially for closed-end funds that invest in level two and level three uh, uh, fair hedges. Now, of course, although, uh, so in, in, in this first table, we uh, run analysis where we uh, can compare uh, all funds that we were able to collect data on. Yeah? So here, based on the, uh, this privilege of concept and similar papers that say, uh, you know, you, even if you take them all, they seem to invest in you know, same, same assets. Yeah? Uh, but we, in our supplemental analysis, we do better. Yeah? And uh, we do... Uh, matching on investment strategies. So uh, there we try to uh, replicate uh, kind of market returns of, of you know, one set of funds uh, with the other and then um, uh, try to find pairs of closed-end funds and open-end funds uh, um, uh, that seem to have uh, very same uh, strategies uh, based on the time series uh, magnitudes uh, of, uh, the, uh, of, of the returns. Yeah. Uh, this reduces our sample uh, somewhat, uh, but it makes sure that we have um, uh, closed end funds and open end funds that uh, really invest in the same or very similar uh, assets. You know? And again, we find that uh, our results hold for that sample too. So closed end funds report lower quality valuations than open end funds. Um, we supplement, so just also to parallel our analysis in the real estate setting, where we, uh, in addition to quality of earnings, we looked also at the quality of disclosures. Uh, we do the same analysis or similar analysis in our, in our mutual fund set. Now, our uh, measure of uh, uh, disclosure quality is the, uh, is the FOC index, or the opposite of the FOC index. So FOC index measures uh, readability uh, of uh, financial uh, uh, statements. Yeah. Uh, I know this is uh, the, the, there are different views in 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 the literature about uh, you know, some papers like this. Folk index others say, uh, well, you know, you can do better, and I'm I'm sure we can do better, but not for uh, one million <laughs> one one million data points. Um, and so we we use this uh, folk index also to to complement our uh, uh, real estate and uh, also uh, mutual fund analysis. And what you see in this uh, table is that um, um, so higher values uh, of uh, the FOC index indicate uh, less readable uh, financial statements. So we find that uh, open-end uh, firms um, uh, provide uh, financial statements that are more easy to read. Yeah? Um, um, and we know that uh, firms, when they want to hide something, uh, they use uh, kind of very difficult language that's difficult to read and uh, just in the hope that if you if you don't understand what you are reading, you also want to spot um, uh, in Unix management or manipulation. Uh, we do hear uh, different analysis. We control for firm uh, fixed effects here, fixed effects. Um, uh, uh, we also look specifically at uh, financial statements of firms that predominantly hold uh, hard to value uh, assets. And across all those uh, specifications, uh, we find uh, robust results that uh, open end firms uh, provide uh, financial statements that uh, with disclosures that are higher quality and that are uh, easier to read and thus are uh, less likely to hide uh, manipulations. So this was our uh, kind of net necessary uh, conditions. Yeah. Uh, so so far we found that there's a higher demand in open end firm setting. There's uh, they produce uh, open end firms also produce uh, higher quality uh, accounting records and especially for difficult uh, to measure assets. Um, but what, what about su 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 sufficient condition? Yeah. Um, uh, so our arguments would uh, also suggest if you um, if open end firms uh, can uh, compensate uh, for the inherent uh, measurement uh, issues uh, of hard to value assets, uh, then uh, we would observe uh, uh, more firms uh, choosing uh, an open end uh, firm, whereby previously they could only go for a, a closed end firm. Uh, so we run this uh, analysis, yeah, and uh, here we'll look at uh, the decision of a firm to set up uh, a fund as an opening. Yeah, 
I recall in the past, um, uh, open end uh, uh, funds with uh, had two value assets uh, that actually didn't exist. Yeah, so this is a relatively uh, new innovation. Yeah, so we look at the emergence over time, emergence and development of uh, of this uh, new uh, industry. Yeah. Uh, of course, this hard to value assets, there could be all sorts of um, uh, asset categories. Uh, we'll look at several uh, based on what data we can find. You know? uh, first, Quant, I was uh, very kind of to a free paper uh, to provide, um, um, as a, I don't know how, how many years they spent uh, finding this data, have also very long appendix on how they managed to identify those firms. Um, and what they shared um, uh, with us is, um, and, and this is for an 18 year period uh, from uh, mid 1990s, uh, in information on US mutual funds that invest in uh, uh, private equity, yes, yeah, so in, uh, in shares of uh, non listed uh, US firms. Yeah. Uh, so this is our uh, the, the look of this number, and they started with, I think, uh, don't, uh, you, you saw this on the graph, I think they started with about two such. Uh, uh, funds have done it. Uh, uh, group, uh, or correct me if I'm on to, to more like hundred such funds here all, 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 all the time, but uh, maybe it's more. Yeah, so this was on on the on, uh, on the third slide. Uh, this is the same data uh, that we use here in this uh, uh, regression. Um, so this is this is one way to measure um, the, the choice to set up uh, an open end fund uh, with hard to value assets. Yeah, we also look at uh, the other measure. Um, uh, here we can uh, we look at uh, uh, the CRISP mutual fund database, um, which provides some information on what type of assets uh, firms invest in. Um, with mutual funds, you uh, can either look at uh, the fund or specific portfolios, yeah, which invest in different type of assets. So we, we do both analysis. This is we look at the uh, number of uh, portfolios investing in hard to value assets or number of funds investing hard to value uh, uh, assets. Yeah. Um, so what, what do we find? Our main uh, test variable is our uh, fair value index. Yeah, so this is in each year measures um, as on, uh, on, on this graph, each year we measure what, what percentage of uh, accounting standards are uh, fair value based here by counting uh, the number of fair value or fair value related words uh, e e e each year in all uh, FASB standards that apply in that year. Uh, we need to also control for uh, other uh, factors, uh, economic factors that may uh, affect firm choice to uh, set up uh, an open end uh, firm with hard to value assets. Uh, we look, for example, at GDP growth, at uh, uh, savings uh, rate, uh, uh, market capitalization, which measures sort of finalization of the level of development of the uh, US capital market all the time. Uh, we look at year 2009 uh, for two reasons. First, of course, the global financial crisis, but then uh, also FASB changed its uh, codification of accounting standards in that uh, year, and uh, we were concerned whether this uh, break in the data uh, somehow affects uh, um, our, our tests. Yeah. So across all those uh, estimations, we find both economically and statistically significant uh, correlation between uh, the use, the development of fair value rules, yeah, and uh, the setup of um, uh, the setup of uh, investment vehicles uh, as open end uh, firms that invest in uh, hard uh, to value assets. Yeah, if we were to interpret uh, this result in a in a causal way, yeah, uh, this would suggest uh, an interesting uh, real effect uh, of uh, uh, fair value rules. Yeah? Uh, the fair value rules help uh, 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 firms uh, choose an open end firm so they uh, effectively uh, uh, extend the spectrum of uh, available, available uh, organizational firms uh, for uh, firms that would like to invest in hard to value uh, assets. I mean, there's not that much you can do with, unfortunately, with the time series analysis and with 18 to uh, kind of 22 points. Um, data points, um, but we, we did try uh, also controlling for other factors which uh, we report in the paper, but uh, not here in uh, the table. 
for example, we looked at um, applicable uh, interest rates, uh, also looking at again, short term treasury, uh, all, all sorts of uh, interest rates on, on the US market. Um, um, and uh, still found uh, uh, very similar results as to what you see here in, in, in this table. Very good. So um, let, let me conclude and then pass to any of your uh, questions. Uh, so we show how uh, our firms uh, use financial reporting to facilitate their choice of the uh, open instruction organizational form. Um, so we could pro provide an accounting-based uh, uh, test for a pharma Jensen theory, and we also extend this theory. Yeah? This theory so far says uh, kind of difficulty to measure is an inherent characteristic. You can't do anything about that. We believe that as accountants, we actually uh, have an influence on that and uh, uh, can um, you know, help uh, uh, firms uh, derive the values uh, that um, deserve much with the higher quality and they've much more trust from uh, investors. Uh, we also contribute to work examining uh, how valuation demands uh, shape the quality of uh, financial uh, disclosures. And uh, uh, interestingly, in uh, Arkansas Tide 2012, um, there's a suggestion uh, that share prices can uh, substitute for reporting quality. Um, so th th this is also consistent with uh, 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 with our findings. Yeah. So the uh, Atkins and just to be clear, Atkins and they haven't tested that. This is just what 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 they speculate could be the case based on their results. Uh, and finally, we add to the literature on the valuation usefulness of uh, accounting information. Um, and uh, interesting. So if you look at uh, accounting standards, uh, uh, accounting standards and conceptual framework. Uh, both FASB, but also ISB would tell you know, accounting records are not there to measure the value of a uh, firm directly. Yeah, that's not, not, not our goal. That's not what they should be used for. Yeah? And we have here a setting where exactly that happens. Yeah? So accounting records determine uh, the value of the firm, that, that asset value at which firms then uh, transact uh, with their uh, uh, investors. Um, so we we we, we shared a uh, role on this kind of unique role of uh, uh, valuation role of accounting and information, uh, and show that accounting uh, uh, records, uh, accounting numbers tend to be higher quality. There's more more disclosures uh, when accounting uh, uh, me measures uh, directly uh, the value of a firm. Well, thank you so much, and uh, be grateful also to your uh, questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, dear Professor Igor, for your contribution and your effort. It's really an excellent presentation, the excellent people. And uh, now, if anyone have any questions, you can open your mic and ask your question. Yes, Joe, you can open your Hi. mic and ask. Yeah. Hi, Igor. Good Hello, to Joe. Great to see you. And, and you too, via Egypt. Very good to see you again. Uh, really, really interesting paper. Very well done. Couple of just queries because you, you started yeah. off on showing that the increase in fair values increased rapidly over time. And I know you're using the time series data. Is there a change in results over time? I know it's difficult possibly to split it too much, but has the, the relevance of this changed with the increase in the use of fair value counting? Well, it's, um, well, that, that, that's an excellent point. So, uh, be, before we uh, oh, di di discover that we can actually look into um, uh, accounting standards and then, uh, you know, just by re reading them can determine whether they became more or less uh, fair value based, uh, we looked at uh, the use uh, of uh, fair value accounting by firms. And uh, that's uh, well, one paper in the GBFA uh, by Kathy Shakespeare and my uh, quarter, uh, by, by my, my colleague Agnew Panaretto. Uh, we, which looked at both uh, use of fair value measurements. So they had this measure fair, fair value assets by total assets, so percent of assets measured by fair value. Uh, in the US, uh, both financial and non financial firms. Uh, this has increased over time, and this, this measure is highly correlated uh, with our measure. So we, we use it kind of to sell us to sell our measure. There's huge problem with that. Um, this information. Uh, became uh, kind of more available, more uh, 
you kind of you could extract this information only after um, um, there, there was a, this innovation started sitting. I don't recall whether it was two thousand six or two thousand eight, yeah? uh, and only after that you could see those disclosures here yeah, and then uh, could, could measure this information. So it's highly correlated, but we talk here unfortunately about them uh, uh, ten to twelve years rather than. Sure, sure, sure. The, the, the other one is more question but i know there are other questions as well but it's just if there are time maybe after the, the questions you mentioned that you've been able to effectively scrape the data i think you said on getting the type the level one, two, yeah, yeah, level yeah. two and two yeah. i'd be fascinated to hear more about how on earth you you do that, but that might be yeah. a whole different story. But let's take no, other questions let, let, let first. But I'd be, because this is, I think I'd be this, really this, keen to find find out yeah, how yeah, on earth you do this. this. Uh, yeah. So this is yeah. uh, we we employed uh, computer scientists. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the, the guy is good. Uh, didn't go into academia. Said uh, I, I got a high paying uh, job. <laughs> at Google now. Yeah. Um, it was from France. Yeah. Was, uh, I actually Steve Young facilitated this. Um, uh, connection, yeah, and he, he, he spent a lot of time. He said, "Like I, I have private interests, yeah, so it's not anymore about my just I must, must solve this uh, for for myself." Yeah, and he's to kind of try, try different approaches. Yeah, and then he said, "Well, I, I can just do the uh, kind of the grab, yeah, of mm -hmm. this information, yeah, uh, and and then uh, run an algorithm so to kind of uh, teach it to uh, then from this um, uh, kind of uh, grab to." Uh, I uh, see the lines and then uh, do the conversion. So we did a lot of checks, but the, the quality, I mean, of course, with one million, you, you know, you can't exclude in some cases. Mm -hmm. wrong, but uh, in those cases, we looked was uh, uh, fantastic uh, quality. I think that it's kind of the fuzzy algorithm. Yes, it kind of does the graph and then kind of tries to determine what's the, what's the row, what's the value, and then uh, it kind of attributes. It. Is it then kind of key, keyword searching for yeah, the so it's, values? Yes, it's the and... keyword to determine this uh, table. Yeah. Um, uh, because it's, well, it's it's not that that stage not that it was well, it must be level one level two level three then there must be some uh, values yeah uh, but it was difficult because those tables can be this layout and this course, layout uh, you know shifted yeah. and um, um, uh, so that that was the step where he said well, you know you know mm -hmm. the, extracting those tables was uh, you know a few weeks work but then um, kind of extracting information from those tables that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fascinating, interesting. I'll, I'll let yeah. others come in. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. I just have a couple of questions, if you allow yes. me. Please. The first one. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, we see the significant uh, uh, role of the fair value on enhancing the financial reporting quality in open-end firm with hard-to-value asset. Can we differentiate between the impact to the fair value reporting and the normal impact uh, of the quality improve over time. Like, I mean, how we control for the potential confounding variable that might affect the observed relationship between organizational form choice and reporting quality, especially in the condition of fluctuating market uh, recently happened. And whether this reporting practice influenced by uh, or influence the liquidity, for example, or redemption behavior of investor, especially during the time of market downtown uh, downturn, like uh, COVID financial crisis, etc. And the second question about the use of fog index, uh, have you considered use robustness check for that using uh, other alternative measure of readability, for example, the uh, lens or flesh index book index? Uh, ATC. Yeah, Thank so you. this is uh, okay. So this is let, let me start with the second one. Um, so the uh, we, we, we had uh, at, at least one one more measure, but uh, ad admittedly we didn't do this uh, calculation of those index uh, ourselves. Yeah, so uh, we, we took it from uh, from CRISP, yeah, which uh, mm -hmm. likely analyzed also in CSR forms in addition to ten. Uh, case and provided this information, so we had, we had at least one one, one other uh, measure. Now, no, sorry, forgot w w which one, but uh, uh, oh. also an alternative measure for uh, readability and uh, re results were uh, the same. Yeah. Now, I think uh, for your um, um, uh, uh, first question, I think that's that's where our uh, first uh, analysis uh, is uh, important. I think. 
So, you know, in, in, in isolation, all uh, our tests can have alternative uh, explanations. Yeah? So we hope that, you know, taken uh, together and kind of translating results across all of those um, uh, tests, um, uh, we, we are able kind of to, to, to convince and say, well, uh, it must be related to... to uh... Now, when you talk about accounting policy, we, we talk about this uh, broadly. Yeah? So this, this mm. is not, uh, you know, we have a fair value... A standard, and as a result, there's this better number. It, it's it's more broader. Yeah? So it was interesting, and I give you a bit just example from uh, from a different setting. Um, uh, this real estate firms in the UK, uh, they were you know like forever yeah. uh, required to use fair value. Yeah, and there's this huge industry yeah. of appraisers. Uh, you know, firms that do valuations. Uh, you, you can value real estate. You can even find on the internet uh, the, the the value yeah. of real estate. This this is all related. Yeah. Now, uh, IFRS 2005, good, continental European firms, you can do now fair value, yeah? And everyone struggled in the beginning. Okay, we want to do fair value. Who, who does this? Where, where are our appraisers? Where is everything? Yeah, but with, with time, yeah, um, you, you now see that uh, uh, may, many actually uh, started doing the so-called revaluation uh, model. If, if it's now majority, even even in Germany, which was uh, kind of lagging behind, yeah, this, uh, you know, you, from 2005, you, you, you most used amortized cost. But over time, this whole industry came about. So this is, uh, I don't think we'll be able to disentangle this. This is all related. Yeah. Yeah? So you have yeah. fair requirements, but then with that comes the industry, with and then kind of over time this this develops. So I think this is uh, this is all that uh, uh, together that um, yeah, hopefully. Okay. Develops. Okay. Thank you very much. Back to the question. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? If any, if you don't have any questions, you can open your mic and ask you question. Yes, Anna. Anna. Hi, Dr. Muhammad. How are you? Hello. Uh, about, it's about uh, the, the the effect of uh, bad news and good news on the two kinds of uh, organizations. I think the, the, the bad news and good news will affect the the closed end more than the, the open end. So what, 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 why would you think that? Uh, so we'll, we'll look. Let's say just let's stay with the with our pri primary setting. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at uh, real estate, which invest in uh, well in the, in the real estate, obviously, and then it's the same types of real estates and um, same same location. Uh, so what, tell me again. I'm just trying to better understand your question. So. You, you, you are worried that one type of firm is more likely to more subject to bad news than the other, or what, yes. what's about good news or or the, the good uh, disclosure about good news and bad news will uh, will affect the 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 closed end more than the open ended. Ah, all right. So you, okay. So all right. So it's uh, you. You say that both of them can experience good news or bad news, but uh, uh, can we look at uh, whether one type of firm incorporates good news or let's say bad news in a more timely manner? Than uh, is, is that something you have in mind? Yes, I I, I yeah. did I, I didn't hear uh, uh, clear or uh, uh, or there is something wrong with my. Uh... No, I think oh, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. So I think well, we we uh, we, we didn't uh, do this analysis, and as we were asking questions, just tr trying to quickly figure out uh, um, uh, how it's uh, uh, possible to do that. I mean, what what we see is, uh, of course, um, uh, impairments uh, is a is, is a measure of uh, bad news, yeah, uh, but only when it's uh, reported uh, in a timely manner, yeah. Uh, so we know that um, uh, uh, impairments are indeed uh, reported in a more timely manner by open end uh, than uh, closed end funds. Yeah, we had uh, I haven't presented it, but we have a, a kind of a test uh, uh, for that. Um, we didn't look at uh, uh, good, good news. Yeah, so here ideally would uh, need to think more about how it could do that. I mean, for um, uh, for for closed end firms, that's uh, obvious. Yeah, we can look at uh, market returns. Yeah, and on a positive market returns as a as, as, as a proxy for good news. Um, but I need to think how how one could uh, measure that in in our um, 
a setting where we don't have market prices. No. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you yeah. very much for, for everything about the, the informative presentation. And see you in Egypt uh, uh, soon, inshallah. Yeah, I hope to see you too. Yeah, thank you, Helen. Thank you. Are, are, there, are there another questions? If anyone has any questions, you can open your mic and ask your question. Uh, thank you very much, dear Professor Igor, for your contribution and your effort. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, presentation. Uh, thank you uh, very much, everyone, uh, joining us today. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. It's been really appreciated for taking the time to present to us, dear Professor Igor. Uh, Mohamed, thank you so thank much you for so organizing much. that. Yeah, th thank you to all attendees. Uh, re really appreciate that. And thank you for your uh, questions. And Mohamed, uh, good, good luck with that. So great, great innovation. So hopefully, all. For decades, yeah, if you find time to do that, that's all long. Thank you. You are very welcome. And I hope to see you in Egypt. You are very welcome. Yes, yeah, yeah, plan to it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.